million seeker, one really understands it. One becomes the wiser and follows the path. Otherwise, what happens, you know, we claim we are wiser. No, I'm undergoing a divorce. Day before yesterday, this young guy told me the story. It came from a referral, and his uncle attends all the session, group sessions. Now, see the part of the delusion. He's quite young. He had been living with his girlfriend for a couple of years, then they separated. Still, he talks to the girlfriend, but now I said, what is your goal? No, I just want peace. You cannot get peace while you are thinking about the girlfriend. So she, he is totally obsessed. Now what happens? He has, he has not been able to perform his duties. He has such a, they have a good business. So I said, what's your goal of life? No, just to meet her. That's all my goal of life. Frustrated depressed now you see that if i start see he wants a solution instantly he said you know give me a solution you are already suffering from such a deeper level of rsm syndrome and in one hour i can give you a solution so i thought it's better to raise the price and send the bill which i know that refusal will come and the refusal came and I said, I'm okay with it. Because in one hour you cannot get anything. So you see, what is the part of the delusion that de here I have a problem, which is not a serious problem, which I have been suffering for a year and I want a solution. And I have already deluded my mind the solution is, can be found in an hour. Or maybe he doesn't really want a solution. He does not maybe. want a solution. <laughs> and what is going to happen, I can understand. Within six months, he will stop doing the job, poor performance, and ultimately, he, his father and his uncle will notice it, and then he will go into depression. Another guy, the another girl, women, again day before yesterday, he contacted me and we have been talking. She is an interior designer living nearby and she had seen 200 YouTube videos of meditation to control her mind and her mind is not controlled. So I said, "You." she said, you give me a tip. I said, I just spoke about Arvindo's uh, uh, story. He went to the master and the master said, close your eyes, watch the thoughts. They are coming from outside. Before they come, throw them out. These are the three instructions which Sri Arvindo followed and he was absorbed into meditation for almost three days. So I said, here are the instructions one of our great masters. No, that is not helping me. I said, then you have to attend the session. So she was also not ready to attend the session because that is a mind. So ultimately that is our topic also. That is our topic also is the last week we covered that three points. That's very important. And the next verse is extremely important. Very, very important. So what he said, now you see that no loss of effort in karma yoga. But I have to understand what is karma yoga. If I don't understand, and how can you understand in just in, uh, in one session? No contrary result, only positive effect. Even little practice gives you a great protection from the fears, from the anxiety, from the duality. That is what we covered last week now another one thing that i missed you know i'm going to just briefly touch upon it we also said that why we perform an action we perform an action that external thing it can i can achieve something external uh, you might have noted now second thing five areas of action what is hidden i can manifest i can modify 
it can culture or I can destroy something. These are the five areas of action. There cannot be the sixth area. So what I missed, I was contemplating, reflecting. I normally reflect, you know, what I missed. So now tell me that what I want, I want a self-discovery. Can any of these five actions help me to reach to self-discovery? Answer is no. So what is the conclusion? No action. Let the time come. No action can ever bring me near to the self-discovery. Then what brings me near to the self-discovery? Remove the ignorance. How you remove the ignorance? By knowledge. The knowledge alone is responsible for helping me to recognize, to cognize the real self. And then only the awakening takes place. No amount of, but, but when, when I am the highest level of a seeker, when the mind easily calms down, it is not full of Raj Siguna. What do you mean by Raj Siguna? It is not running outside. It, when you say to the mind, mind stop, and it stops. You say to the mind that go within, it goes within. Then you say to the mind now live within, it lives within. Until that state comes, it means that I have 90% of Satoguna, Rajoguna can be managed by the Satoguna. And that is where we are heading to in the... Now how Krishna explains? Krishna consider that it is our real self. As a human person who is outside, is a demigod and who is guiding us. But always never forget that he is our real self. So the real self is guiding to find the real self. So now in the 41st verse, he says you need a specific kind of an intellect. A very specific intellect. If you don't have that intellect and which guides the heart, nothing can be achieved in this journey of East and Western. So what he says, what kind of an intellect? Fixed and resolute intelligence is one and homogeneous. My friend Krishna says to his so friend, when the mind is multifarious and multi-branching, our intelligence drops down. Our level of awareness drops down. Whatever we resolve, it breaks up. That is the same question Caroline asked me, you know, there is a distrust mood she referred to me. So I said, okay, we will take care so of that. She also skipped the session today. Oh, she did? Yeah. Ah, okay. So, so it's okay, it's a part of the journey. So your focused mind is over, is over, is the key to overcoming doubt. A steady purpose conquires the indecision. See that. I have a steady purpose that is living in my mind. That is why you texted me. A steady purpose conquires the indecision. A tentative mind wanders without end. When I am not clear what is the goal of my life, then I will always think, you know, now I am undergoing a divorce. Nobody says, now I'm undergoing a marriage. <laughs> so that is another delusion. You just told me. I used to attend those sessions, you know, uh, in New Jersey. And I said, you know, this is not a cup of my tea. You know, what is this? What is this happening? So I left it. I attended a couple of sessions and then I said, no, I'm not doing it. Then... Yeah, I I, I question my, uh, it's one time a month when I think, do I gain anything out of this ever? Yes. <laughs> I don't know that I do. 
it is very important i think i attended something uh, gilbert chamber of commerce you know when i came here so i attended few of the sessions and then i said no th i'm not going to attend this this is very uh, it is totally distracting so anything that distracts me from the my goal of life determination is a singular seed that must grow i must remind myself of the resolve and the determination i have to water it well by regular practice strong roots will help i should not leave my path of uncertainty i should not leave even a single day of my uncertainty it looks very it looks very tough in the beginning my mind should be clear my intellect is clear what i am going to do every 2 or 3 hours and if the mind is wandering somewhere else i should bring it to you already have cleared that level om namah shivaya that i am going to advance that meditation practice in coming friday so i should instantly remember when i go to the sleep mind reminds me by when i wake up the mind reminds me when i look at the honey mind reminds me so that a reminder is already there so that means the mind is not wavering now i'm just giving a metaphorical view of this verse and then we will go into the deeper into the verse so be resolute decisive in each endeavor let single minded purpose guide you ever with poise and grit meet each movement and the duty duty it's all about now make it very simple i'm performing my duty i'm stick to my duty i am resolute to my duty so i can use those words what happens i get a resolute mind focus determined mindset in order to overcome self doubt and indecision it states that a steady resolute purpose can conquer hesitation and wandering of the mind now can i say this to this these to this girl who is who is an interior designer and just i gave you the example of this young guy no answer is no i cannot give it even if i say it will not work them they say i know it so we have we should have a clarity we should have a clarity now how that clarity comes so i have taken uh, uh some help from other texts i told you that each verse is written almost in a poetic form and each verse has four parts and each part gives the one message and it is written in an uh, encrypted form and it is like a zip file we have to open it so there that is why you know every verse needs a detailed understanding and explanation so i have taken the explanation from another text your mind is swinging your mind is not resolute you find frustrating and that worked in fact in a meeting that you said you know what the work so now what what the question you should ask what is the worth attaining in life when you have a mood swing when you are in res resolution is not there when the mind is wavering what is the worth attaining in life and now is a seeker i know it is the self realization it is the liberation or the nirvana it is only the union with the divine that is the worth attaining in life we have already seen marriage you have seen divorce you have seen kids you have seen money you have seen everything nothing can reach what is worth attaining in life so on that <laughs> note i was going to ask you in my current state like everything that gets in the way of my seeker journey is like a kind of annoying 
right? Like, uh, and I know I have my duties, and I focus on them to get them done so I can go back to study, contemplation, meditation. Uh, but also, I think my, I know the answer, but, like, how much does one need to really, like, I, I have to, 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 to do my duty well, I must know some fundamentals about business or whatever. How much time does one dedicate to, it just feels like such a silly waste of time even to read a business book or attend a seminar. I find it very like, like I'm uh, like a hypocrite, like I shouldn't be there, you know, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's better. I think like, do I need to be here? Is this just a bunch of like what other people do because they don't know what to do with themselves? And I just, why am I here? I ask myself that in like many, many situations for the last several months to a year, you know, and I've dropped a lot of things that I think were probably su superfluous, but, like, to what degree do I drop so many things that I'm, like, maybe not successful in my worldly duties, or does that even matter? Is it even important? I can tell you easily, the answer lies in the last session that we did. No loss of effort in Karma Yoga. So whatever you have learned, whatever the experience you have, you just recontemplate on that. Is there a new way of doing the same thing? Let me contemplate and reflect in my business. So that is what the no loss of effort in Karma Yoga. You are already stick to the Karma Yoga. It is not a, what we say, it is not a I, I forgot that verb, it's a proverb, it's not an atomic science, something like that, you know, we say, uh, so no, you already know your skill sets, you know everything of ins and out of the business, you have been doing it, so you re recall a, each one of them and you see that, oh, do I need something to change here, in my expression, in my action, what I'm doing? No contrary result, only the positive effect, positive outcome is there if I stick to the karma yoga. But I have to face, I have to face the consequences what I have done in the past. But now another, even a little of effort gives it, saves me from the great fears. What are the fears I have? I have the fears of losing money. I already lost, if I say that I lost money with these two so-called uh, beautiful women and a young guy, but I stick to that, you know, I said, no, I'm not going there. That's not my cup of tea. So you, I may think that I have lost money, but ultimately I recover. It comes back. So why there is a fear? So you stick to the Karma Yoga and you evolve your business ideas while contemplation and reflection one thing and there is no there is no issue even if you even if you read the book on the business and get some ideas no idea there is no problem so it means what is happening that's a good point <laughs> i'm minimizing i'm minimizing my activities and I am putting more directed effort onto the business. So that directed effort into the business will put me into the right frame of karma yoga towards the business. So I will have more time for contemplation and reflection and continue the journey. So the first question we always should ask, what is the worth attaining in life? Second question, what is the worth knowing? And that is what how I answered you. What is the worth knowing? So what is the worth knowing in business? What is the worth knowing in relationship? What is the worth knowing in managing the fund finances? What is the worth knowing in knowing so that I can reach to the real self. And that is the path we are trying to have. So what is the worth attaining in life? I must be very clear in my head, in my intellect. It changes my wavering mind. What is the worth knowing? What is the worth giving? 
giving up and avoiding. What is the word giving up and avoiding? So I detach myself from these depressing seminars and activities. Or it also requires detaching from the worldly pleasure and distraction. What is the worth enjoying? What is the worth doing? So I have covered, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six. What is the worth attaining in life? My mind goes to the real self. What is the worth knowing? Worth knowing is the real self, but at the same time, for the sake of doing the karma yoga, uh, what is the worth knowing the relationship? What is the worth doing the business? What is the uh, that is also included? What is the worth giving up and avoiding? So I have to find out every day what is the worth giving up, and I recognize that I'm wasting my time and effort. Yeah, it gives us little bit, you know, it gives us little bit of ego. Oh, I am presenting myself before the people. Now that level, that level has already gone. That, that you know, excitement has already gone. I made more than 200 presentations in medical conferences in India and here also in New Jersey. And then I said, it is done. I'm not attending any session. I'm not writing any paper. It's worth doing it. It's not worth doing it. I'm not getting anything. Because everyone presents their, their point of view and then clapping is there and then that's all. I know what you are saying. So so you just you just keep it keep it very, very, very calm and relaxed. You know, that's not my cup of tea. What is so it means what is worth giving up and avoiding? But now I am giving up and avoiding calmly. I don't have an urge to make my big ego in a conference, in a peer group, or in a seminar. I said, no, no, I'm not doing it. What is the worth enjoying? Very important. What is the worth enjoying? I enjoy food, good company, but I have to remind myself only worth enjoying is the real self. That is what my goal of life is. It doesn't mean that I shouldn't go to a restaurant to eat a food or celebrate birthday. Okay, let us do it. But do it at the same time I know what is the worth enjoying that is my real self. What is the worth doing? And then, you know, if you think in those, or with all these six questions, it helps us. All the answers of the six questions placed in the intellect is known as the one-pointed determined intellect. So there is a specific word in the 41 verse, Vyavasayatmika buddhi. Vyavasayatmika buddhi. Or if I translate that into Sanskrit, a resolute and one-pointed intellect. When you answer all the six questions, you have a one-pointed, resolute intellect. Having a one-pointed intellect focused on the dedication to the self while performing action, while doing my karma yoga. So what is going to happen? It will remove the useless aspect of the actions in my life. What is going to happen? It will, refer, it, it will keep your intellect calm, integrated, focused on the dedication to the self while engaged in action. So the karma yoga is happening outside. The intellect is clear inside. What is the result? It makes us me free from the anxiety and the stress. <coughs> That is why I've been telling you that I'm always ready. Five or ten minutes before the session, I look at it, you know, this is what I have to talk. Or even if I don't remember, that is okay. Because I know the verse and I can explain the verse. So, you know your duty. You know your responsibility. You know how the work can be done. How the employees can be guided. You know it. 
So why to waste our time? The karma, karma yoga, the seeker is one pointed as contrast to the scattered mind. I have understood what is karma yoga, but at the same time, my intellect is scattered. So I have to make this intellect become one pointed and answering those, those six questions. So you get, what is the worth knowing? What is the worth attending? What is the worth giving up? So I give up. When I'm giving up means attending those sessions which are meant only to brag my ego, boost my ego, listen to the other, and no, 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 that it is worth giving up. What, that that way, you know, my mind will uh, ultimately uh, keep wavering. You have the events of divorce in your life and you are listening to the guy who is talking that I'm going into divorce. Your mind will definitely go back. It will remember some impression. So why to do that? So my, why to make my intellect unstable, uh, scattered? What is the worth enjoying? What is the worth enjoying? So what is the worth enjoying? And your intellect says the worth enjoying is only the real self. So what happens? You have saved time. You have saved your effort. You are not wasting your time. The mind is calm. And when the mind is calm, intellect shines. It can take a right decision. There is no distraction even while performing the karma yoga. We have yet to cover the extensive part of the karma yoga in the chapter three. Do you remember, you should also remember from the verse number 11 to 25 or 30, we have covered what is the highest path, what are the six traits of the consciousness or the real self. And now he has taken a diversion. He says, no, if you don't perform the karma yoga, you cannot reach there. Now you see that today you have picked up. Your mind has reflected on that. What is the worth going there? Oh, there is no worth going there. So your intellect will take a right decision and the mind now it will not feel that you are absentee in that group. Now that's enough. Enough is enough. Okay. I attended, I think more or less it is the same chamber. I attended the Gilbert Chamber of Commerce, I think four years ago. I used to attend, I said, you know what, I'm getting it. And then I left it. And you have to spend money also to be a, to be a member of that. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. I know that, yes, yes, I know that. So equanimity, freedom from the anxiety and the stress, despite external busyness, now you may be really busy in your business that's a worth doing it but be busy with awareness with the calmness of the mind you are very clear because the intellect is very clear in doing your business inner calmness and stability of the mind is there and that will help you perform the karma yoga what is another part that you focus on the efficiency in action now your focus is on efficiency and action, not getting some ideas from a meeting because you have contemplated, you know your business, you know the steps, you know the concept and principle. And instead of attending the meeting, you contemplate maybe for an hour, half an hour or an hour every day in the business, what needs to be done? What is the worth giving up? What is the worth adding up? Pick up those six questions and you see that the business will, uh, fall into the right place. And that is, you are already doing a karma yoga. That is the way of doing the karma yoga. Karma yoga in your business, karma yoga in your life. So that will help us a steady spiritual progress while engaged in the worldly duties. They do not touch me. I just have a play and a fun. I'm just in a play and a fun and I'm doing my duties duties in my business. So what happens now, you see? Is a play and fun in my business? Yes. There are challenges, yes. But I keep on doing with a steady mind, yes. 
So what is going to happen? There is definitely a growth inside, evolution inside. And greater the evolution inside, it is going to put your business on the right track also. But at the same time, there is a purification of the mind and the heart. And you are moving forward towards the journey of the self-discovery. This, this verse is very important. Another way, even if you forget these six questions, you can ask that what you, what is the best, the highest and the greatest in life? Superlative degree. So how to find it? Principle to find out the best, the highest and the greatest in life. So what is the, that is the principle and what is the concept? You just start finding out what is the path of the shreyas and what is the path of the prayers. And the moment you find what is the path of the prayers and what is the path of the shreyas means, path of the shreyas means what is right and good in my life. What is right and good is the dharma. What is the dharma? Dharma is doing my personal duty. And what I like and what is pleasant to me, I should be able to drop it. When I drop it, so I find the best, the highest, and the greatest in life. We have covered, I think, Shreyas in the prayers. You may remember. So we are just bringing those principles. And I'm bringing those principles whenever I find it, it is suitable. So you see that what is the best and the highest and the greatest in my life? I know the answer that puts me into the path of the shares. What is right, good? What is right and good to be done is the duty, is the dharma, is the karma yoga. Different words are used. What I like and what is pleasant to me. If you find out that attending the meeting after, yeah, we may get something. I'm not saying that we may get something, but after that, it's a monotonous. It's the same stuff. And we get excited. Oh, today this guy has told me the, his story. Oh, that is also my story which, for which I was frustrated. So I relate myself to them. But why I relate myself to them? To a person whose uh, story is frustrated. I enjoy it because I feel, you know, I'm not alone. But what is the fun of uh, feeling that I'm not alone? <laughs> what is the fun? There is no fun. It involves having a clarity. So what is going to happen? What is worth attending in your life? What is the worth attending in life? What is the worth knowing? What is the worth giving up? What is the worth enjoying? What is the worth enjoying? What is the worth doing? What should I do? I'm doing my best. Let me manifest the knowledge. If I keep my mouth shut, I'm not able to manifest that knowledge which I know. So everything is happening in the best possible way. We are coming to the greatest principle that is what Sri Aurobindo puts in a different way. I'm bringing Sri Aurobindo here to help us understand this verse. Self is within me. First line. I am within the self. I mean to say real self. This is the summary of what I have talked, uh, what I have discussed until now. The self is within me. I am within the self and all is self. That's how Sri Aurobindo used to put it. They are genius in, in Eastern wisdom. This is what I have talked. This is the summary. Self is within me. What is that self? It's having the six characteristics. I am within the self. Who is this I? 
Uh, who is this I that I is doing the karma yoga? And when I see the word, all is the self. Let we can simplify all joy is in the self, all fulfillment is in the self, all security is with the self. I am not the part of the world outside. No matter what food or the treatment I get, my joy remains the same, my peace remains the same. That is another simplification of the, uh, this verse. All joy is in the self, all fulfillment is in the self, all security is with the self. I am not the part of the world outside, no matter what treatment I get, my joy remains the same. Once you achieve that state, then attend any number of meetings. It doesn't make it doesn't change your mindset. Then I find that there is no use of attending the session. Or if there is any use of attending the session, you attend it. So what is happening? By the karma yoga, we are bringing the equanimity of the mind. What is the equanimity of the mind? Homogeneous state of the mind. What is the homogeneous state of the mind? It is the purified state of the mind. That is the goal of the karma yoga. We remain unperturbed by the life, dualities, situations. They are bound to change. We are bound to have ups and downs in our life. There is no way out. Can I do the same activities, do the same thing physically as I was doing at the age of 20? No. Sorry to say, I have seen a lot of people of my age, they, they still do the jogging in such a heat of 105 and 110 degree outside. Question is, it is required. Can't you do some physical exercises to your limitations and pay more attention to your evolution? At the age of 80, I have still a sensual desire. The normal course of the life says, now give it a stop. Change the direction of the mind. Change the direction of the mind. Now you pay more attention to your contemplation and reflection. That is the life of a sannyasa. That is the life of a monk. Living at a home, you are a monk. We don't say that. I was telling, uh, did I tell you? I was telling the group session that uh, one drinks vodka and continuously for 40 years, now he is 70. The doctor says that, you know, now it's the time to give a break. So he went to the church and he said, God, I have not asked you anything from you. Give me two liver. Doctor told me that now my one liver is already gone. This is the idea we keep in our mind. It doesn't work that way. The life cannot work that way. So now you see, you know, two liver, uh, somebody needs two pancreas. Oh, I'm still unhappy with my those pleasures. I married three times, I divorced three times, so let me marry four times. I've seen our Indian uh, lawyer who is very famous, who married, uh, fifth time in the age of 75. So it means I still have the same, but my body is not helping me. When body is not helping me, then I go for a couple of those medications which are already available in the market. But it takes a toll on my heart, on my vital organs. I'm not seeing the flow of life. I'm not moving with the flow of life. I talk about the flow of life. I don't move with the flow of life. So you see that I'm deviating from the Karma Yoga. Essential, you see that? Master is not saying anything that you stop doing anything, but understand the flow of the life, where the body is now. With the firmness of the mind, you understand. You have an unshaken faith 
in your intellect in the wisdom to avoid any unfavorable condition in your life. We invite those unfavorable conditions in our life. What it means? My intellect is clear. I am living with a purpose. People live without any cause. They always have a problem. They always have a problem. It creates an unfavorable condition in their life. Live with a purpose. Not just blindly following the desires that makes the mind impure. What a beautiful principle in the concepts. Krishna is talking about this. And connect your action to the higher purpose. That makes the mind pure. So simple a principle. Karma Yoga is not connect the action to a higher purpose. It means I'm not connecting the purpose to my pleasures, to my attachment, to the emotional dependence. Why? Because the joy comes from within. Because we know the joy and the peace are within. We are very clear. Happiness is an inside job. What is worth doing now? What is worth attending? What is worth doing? What is worth giving up? So my mind says, no, I will have a joy outside. No. My master used to say after the age of 50 or 60 as the as one feels that your partner should be your friend in progress on the spiritual path. But we use the partner for a different purpose. I promote, you see, that is what joy comes from within, not from outside world. So I have the resources, very good that I can maintain those resources and I can use these resources to evolve myself. Realizing that I have, I have earned so much, I have wasted so much. How many tons of garbage we have extracted until now eating all kinds of food. They turn into the same kind of a garbage. So, I'm just giving you some thoughts in your mind. So when we think in that way, the best food for which you pay $100 or for which you pay $10, ultimately it is going to convert into a garbage. But only 10 minutes and 15 minutes of palate, sensual pleasure, for which what is worth giving up. So your mind becomes very clear and it becomes more and more aware of that clinging so the clinging will be dropped naturally when i think in that way clinging to the worldly things or relationship out of the desire leads to unfavorable situation i gave an example of this vodka guy it happened you know, I can tell you frankly that those people who have so, so much of emotional dependence on the worldly things, they always pray to the God. That is not possible. Instead of 32 teeth, you give me 32 livers. I'm just, you know, making uh, a, in a different sense, you know. So we, we have to analyze, we have to observe our life. That makes my mind fully busy, I can tell you. Otherwise, mind is relatively free. There is no use. Mind is ever free. Mind moves into the satoguna. When I contemplate and reflect on in this way. But I don't do, re I don't reflect in this way. Lasting contentment is found by looking inward. Again, I'm repeating. It's a very important verse. That's why I'm taking time. So we should set time each day at least. Uh, I used to do it. Now I, I don't do it. Uh, every day for even 15 minutes, I check what action I performed. How many actions I did it today. Is it worth doing? Is it worth giving up what I did in actions? So you can compare those 
actions with a five-fold achievement by the action in the very beginning that we covered last week and I repeat it. And then you ask yourself, what is it worth doing it? Is it worth enjoying it? It is worth giving up? What is the worth enjoying? And then you recognize maybe first two days, three days, you will not recognize. But after that, you say, why I'm doing it? No, oh, let me leave it. Let me drop it. And the moment you drop it, your mind becomes steady. You don't have an urge, an excitement to be to be in the company of those people who tell their crazy stories. And oh, for example, so what happens? The mind lives within itself. A kind of contentment is there. A fulfillment is there. Fulfillment is there. Living for a higher purpose brings meaning. That is the meaning. So we simply understand intellectually, but we don't see the concepts behind it. Everyone says you live for a higher purpose. You know That's a very famous statement. But unless I understand what it means really, what it means to the mind and what it means to the intellect, it doesn't work that way. Now I have now two hours today, so I don't know, I have it found the two or three hours almost couple of weeks instead of doing one thing where I have, I de used to derive the pleasure, but then got frustrated. So let me see how can I use these two or three hours even for my contemplation or giving something to the society. Again, it's a part of the karma yoga. So that will be nice. Why, again, you know, I'm coming back to make the verse very clear. The world is not a source of lasting joy and security. We have already covered that. But now I can, what is worth attending? Oh, I have so much of worth of money and then I have a security. Then what is worth attending? Can I get the security? It doesn't mean that I should waste the money. It doesn't mean that. The world, I recognize clearly the world is not a lasting joy or a security. That is settled in my intellect and now I am earning money. Karma Yoga. So what I found out? That there is no worldly attachment and clinging. Why? Because that will give me a sorrow. That will create an unfavorable situation in my life. I'm not clinging to the world. How can I am doing it through the Karma Yoga? So what is the foundation of that Karma Yoga? In this verse, it is a resolute, focused mind. How the focused mind can be attained? I understand it clearly. What is the worth knowing? What is the worth attending? What is the worth giving up? What is the worth knowing? You see, the, your mind is constantly aware of that. world continues to say us, haunt us, it sends us the message, I will not give you that joy which you have been seeking in your life. I have shown you when you experience the frustration, when you experience the problem and the stress in your relationship, the world is constantly saying to me and I'm not listening. by offering me a, an event in a situation of frustration, unfavorable condition. The world is constantly saying me, pointing me. It wants to make me aware, but I am not aware of that. world is saying, my master used to say, the world is saying that don't come very close to me. I'll give you a shock. Don't come very close to me, which means I'm attached. I'm clinging. What is this world? World consists of people, uh, places of the time and objects. Don't come close to me. Buy a new car. Go close to it. After a few weeks, that pleasure is gone. Go to your honey. 
after a few hours of that sensual pleasure, we, we feel a sense of frustration. We, and that we use it to fall into sleep and consciousness so that we can do the same thing again. Word is constantly saying, don't come very close to me, I'll give you a shock. Now see another, another text which is very tough. Tough in a sense that it, it, it helps us, it blows over mind. That master says, even the people you love, we love, will eventually leave us. How? Whether there is an agreement, disagreement, whether there is a death, or they have changed. The three, three or four possibilities. Death, I do not have control. They disagree or agree with me, I do not have a control. They have changed their mind. I do not have a control. Will eventually leave us. So what happens? My friend, the nature of the worldly joy is insecurity. I'm, I need not to give a lecture to my near and the dear ones. I have to feel it inside. I have to become wiser inside. So what it means by being wiser? Your mom disagrees, you thank you internally and then you say that uh, you perform the karma yoga with your mom and that's done. Finished. Why? Because you have already know the principle, people we love most will eventually part with us, either by their death or disagreement or changed. So now I'm in tune with the higher principle of life. That way my mind is steady, intellect is resolute, and it is not going anywhere. My master used to say the marriage or living in a relationship is to conquire the mind and doing karma yoga to realize the self. Well, I'm just putting these words in your mind. Oh, my relationship is to help me evolve how I can work. Let other partner does not work for me. But I am working for myself. Internally. Internally. So any relationship, whether it's a marriage or a relationship between a mom and the son or the father, oh, it, it should work. What is going to happen? My intellect now will dictate over the mind. Every time it will remind me. What, what it will remind me? The world is not the source of the joy and the pleasure. My mind is looking impulsively, instinctively, the joy and the pleasure outside. And then what happens? It gives me a shock. And then I enter into another unfavorable situation. And the journey continues throughout my life until I die. Real self alone is the nature of the joy that we have already covered. That is why you see intelligently Krishna has. So what is going to happen? So once the intellect is steady, the joy is in the self. There should come a time that I have no work in all joy. What what means by no work? Now that I'm doing a karma yoga, that is a play and a fun. Ego is not attached there. So mind is already purified. Mind is already purified. All problem comes and I am unaffected because I am not a part of the world. Gradually, I come to that state of realization. Then I'm not the part of the world, you know, obviously. Any problem, they come and they, they come to go. I have to recognize that. So there is a firm conviction. There is a firm conviction in the intellect 
that does not waver the mind. I have to know the self. Yes, any problem, they, they have come to go. Why I should be affected by that? And that results into understanding work is not a nature of a joy. Every work I do, I complete it, it is a joy. I cannot be secure at the physical and the worldly level. There is always a sense of insecurity. We talk about the life-saving drug. Even the life-saving drug has an expiry date. <laughs> so life-saving drug is the money. Life-saving drug is the house. Life-saving drug is the relationship. It always has an expiry date. Who will be expired before we don't know. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that I'm going against anyone. I'm challenging the mind. So the more you challenge the impure mind, it returns to its natural state. Those who do not have that intellect, what that intellect? That is firm, that is clear, that is that is that has a clarity and a conviction. Then what happens? Your honey says, oh, we want, we should go to the market. Yes, go to the mall. But your mind is not wavering. Why? Because you are going with her because it's, it's, it's a duty. It's my personal duty. So internally you are duty. You have a hundred percent of emotional freedom. Emotional bondage is not there. Clarity is there. Your intellect is still firm and resolute. And one-pointedness and a single-mindedness. That is the verse we have been. So now you see that, you know, we don't have a loss of effort. If you combine the last, this verse and the previous verse. First quality in the mind we reach that there is no loss of effort. Second is, the moment I have changed my mental attitude towards the activity, the result is immediate. What is that result? I'm, I'm already entering into the state of the calmness. Calmness is there. Second result. Third result. No contrary result. Because I don't see any contrary result outside. Fourth result, mistakes do, do not matter. We commit mistakes. Human is to err, but it doesn't matter. Why it is that doesn't matter? I recognize, oh, oh, I did desire prompted action. That is the mistake inside me, so I'm going to change now. So you take it so easy. You don't have a guilt. That's very important to understand. Sometimes we have extreme guilt in our life. And so how you remove that guilt? Oh, it's a desire prompted action. That's why I have a guilt. So mistake doesn't matter. Fourth one. Fifth one. No action can ever be complete in itself. So what it means? You have performed your karma yoga, you have done your personal duty, that is done, finished. That is the only essential thing to be done. Business cannot be completed forever. Eating the food cannot be, you, you eat today and you say that from today I'm not going to eat. Not possible. So no action can complete forever. That is the nature of the world. Once we understand that, the mind becomes so clear. 
The mind doesn't run after, it doesn't rush. Oh no, I have to do this, I have to do that. What happens then? Mind is very clear. Another quality the mind attains is the problemlessness. If I, if it is a word, you understand, absence of all the problems in your head. The problem is not there in the, in the head. So when the problem is not there in the word, in the head, the word outside is an opportunity for me to evolve and continue doing yoga, continue performing my yoga. That is the beauty of this 